we're on the hunt for some of the rarest and most coveted beers made in the world. In the last 10 years, American craft breweries have come to dominate the world rankings in beer. And the best of the best of these are made in small batches all across the country. The huge demand and limited supply for these rare brews means you're not going to find them on the shelf at your local store. Our goal of this show is to bring you along to the local brewery events and show you that the hunt for these beers is just as memorable and fun as drinking the beer in the end. Limited release. Hey Rob, what's on tap for today? Today is going to be a great day. We finally get to do an event that's not a Russian Imperial Stout, and we get to drink what a lot of people consider to be the very best beer in the world. Uh, you must be talking about Pliny the Younger. Absolutely. We're going to go and visit another craft brewery in California that's pushing the envelopes of what beer is supposed to be. Well, let's go take a look at this unique Northern California brewery. Originally owned by Corbel Champagne, Russian River Brewing was acquired by owners Vinny and Natalie in 2003. For the first two years, they operated on the Corbell property and Vinny honed his craft and gained invaluable experience building a brewery from the ground up. In 2004, they opened a 20-barrel brew pub in downtown Santa Rosa to great success. Four years later, in 2008, they opened their 50-barrel production brewery nearby, which allowed them to triple production and distribute to four more states. Brewery owner and head brewer Vinny Salerzo was widely credited with creating the double IP style while working down at the Blind Pig in San Diego. And apparently he did it because the equipment he was working with was so outdated that he actually just added extra hops to cover up any off flavors that might be present in the beer. Well, however he did it, the style has been well received by craft beer drinkers all across the country. Since the double IPA is a variant of the India Pale Ale, why don't you give us a history of that style? Sure. The popular story is that when the British Empire spanned the globe in the 18th century, one of the logistical problems was keeping the soldiers and patriots well and truly sauced on proper British ale. The story goes that beer at the time was unable to survive the long sea voyage through hot climates to arrive unspoiled. If beer was brought on voyages, the boat crews had to drink all the ale along the way before it soured, which I'm sure made for an interesting boat ride. If only they could find a way to keep their beer stable and free from spoiling on a long journey. In the 1780s, brewer George Hodson at the Bow Brewery in East London created the first India Pale Ale recipe. By increasing the hop content and raising the alcohol level, he created a very bitter, alcoholic, sparkling pale ale that could survive the journey to India properly conditioned. The problem is, none of this is really true. There were beers at the time, stouts and other heavier beers, that could survive a trip to India and beyond. More likely, since beer drinkers in hot climates like lighter, refreshing beers, India Pale Ales were created to satisfy their need. George Hodson did sell a pale ale for India, but as early as 1760, almost 20 years prior, brewers knew that it was necessary to add extra hops for beers destined for hot climates. So now that we know where IPAs come from, let's learn a little bit about the beer we're after today. Okay, so Russian River is most well known for Pliny the Elder, which is a double IPA. It's available year round, but it's really hard to find in the shelves because many people consider it to be one of the best beers in the world. And for a two week period in early February, they released Pliny the Younger, which is a true triple IPA with almost three times the hops level of a standard pale ale. Now, Pliny the Elder himself was an ancient Roman novelist, naturalist, and naval commander. And he's generally given credit with coming up with a botanical name for hops, Lupus Salactarius, which means wolf among the shrubs. Unfortunately for him, he died during the eruption of Mount Vesuvius back in 79 AD. Uh, and his son Pliny the Younger was a Roman lawyer, author, and magistrate. He lived a generally easy life, uh, he did nothing to enhance brewing, and he did not die in a volcano. Oh, much better. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always love beers that have a cool history like that. Now Pliny the Elder of the beer was first made back in 1999, and by 2004 they were making it year-round. By 2006 it had taken on such a cult status that it's become very hard to find. And uh, Pliny the Younger was first brewed in 2005. It's only available on tap in the brewery. So it's uh, very difficult to get your hands on. There are some kegs that go around to local bars, but it's just very difficult to find. So it's what, 6? 6, 6 a.m. 6 a.m. And we got here about half an hour ago. There's 20 people in line in front of us. Probably 20 people behind us now, too. Yeah. Yeah, so. The sun's not up yet. It's not terribly cold. No, 35, 40 degrees. It's not super windy. It's 
It's definitely more pleasant than some of the late nights we've waited for beer, but yeah. this is sort of where we're at. Um, as you can see, the brewery's right behind us. Um, I think the they start pouring at 11 o'clock, so five hours to go. Excellent. Oh no, the weather's, weather's beautiful. <laughs> I told Natalie this morning, I think the weather gods hang out with the beer gods. Uh, <laughs> so how's this year's batch? Uh, best batch ever. Best just batch ever. <laughs> hands down. <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah, just through hop selection, a little change in dry hop technique, nice. and, um, change the bittering hop. It's, it, it, it is by far the best batch, I think. So. so what time did you get here last year? Uh, I'd say about 8, 8.15. And how far back in the line were you? I was about at the end of the block. How far down did you get in the first wave when it finally came? Uh, I think they let the first wave in, and then I made it to about that Chinese food restaurant right there. That one right there? Yeah. All right. Uh, and so and then, so then you got there at 11 o'clock. How long did it take you to get the last half block from that Chinese food restaurant into the restaurant, into the... Mm, after that? I'd say about five hours. Five more hours? Maybe four or five, yeah, but it was a while. All right, so it, it's about 8 o'clock. Uh, I think there's right now, I think we just counted, there's about 150 people in line. So the people that are showing up after this are not going to be able to get in for the first wave, and they're going to have to wait that extra three hours yeah. for people to leave so that they can start getting in. Yeah, because I'm guessing the people who got here and waited in line for three hours beforehand aren't going to hang out inside for ten minutes and then leave. Yeah, probably not. They'll yeah. probably have three or four beers and then stumble out yeah. around one or so. Yeah. But uh, Pliny starts to flow at 11. Delicious. Delicious. We got here around three. Yeah. So you left at like two in the morning? Yeah. Basically. It's both it's ours. It's not really? Yeah. So you've been here before? I have. So how long do you stay inside once you get in? Um, Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to tell you a story about a man and a beer. Pliny the Elder was a Roman naturalist scholar historian and before perishing while helping save the planet. Is this your first Pint of the Younger release? Yes it is! How are you liking it so far? Oh my goodness, I've waited my whole life and it's amazing and I had five of them. For wolf. I got a line at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> yeah, get up that early for beer. That's dedication. Alright, so it's, uh, what time is it? I don't know. It's later than when we came in. Yes, we've been here for a few hours now. We've had uh, four Pine of the Youngers and a few others to taste side by side. Exactly. Yep. Um, we have to say the Pine of the Younger is amazingly good. It's a very, I mean, it's, it's incredible with the level of pops that they add into this beer that it, it absolutely does not taste like just drinking a flower. No, it's incredibly I mean, smooth. It's, yeah. it's very well balanced. Yeah, I gotta absolutely. Say. Yeah. I assume you haven't had any glasses of Pine of the Younger today? Why would you assume that? <laughs> the crowd that we've been talking to, everybody is super excited. They're all having a great time. Uh, the staff is great. Yeah. Like, we've been, we have had no trouble. We've been constantly brewed up. There's still a line outside, even though it's like an hour, you know, several hours after they open. Yeah. There's still, I think, 100 people outside waiting for us to leave, frankly. But, um, you know, this is, this is absolutely a wonderful event, and I would highly recommend it to anybody who can make the trip out here. Robin, and what is uh, particularly famous about you? Well, a lot of things, but I, um, I was one of the founders of Pete's Wicked Ale. I, I, I think it's very balanced. It's got a good flavor to it. The Simcoe's still there, but I, I, I would like a little more malt on the back end. Yeah. Uh, give it a little more creaminess on the palate, a little better finish. But it's freaking younger. Come on! Uh, we thought that if we made an elder at 8% alcohol, we needed to make a younger. And at that point, the question was, do we uh, make it a lower alcohol beer or a higher alcohol beer? And, um, well, we went for the higher alcohol beer and just thought it was would actually make a better beer. I, I jokingly say that, but we, we thought the hops would meld better. 
Uh, most, most people think it opposite, that the higher the alcohol, the more hops you add, the more intense hop flavor you'll get. It's actually the other way around. If you lower the alcohol, you can actually get the hops to pop more in the kettle and in the flavor and in the aroma. So by actually making it a higher alcohol beer, it's 10.8 this year, Pliny the Younger, it, it, it actually makes it more difficult to get the hops to be more uh, balanced in the overall flavor of the beer. So uh, we make about 200 barrels of Pliny the Younger a year, and uh, almost half of it is used at the, uh, at the pub. Uh, now if I had to pick, in all seriousness, it would probably be the hop time harvest ale. We, when we brewed Younger for the first time nine years ago, uh, we brewed it straight off on the brew house. We never did a test batch, so I don't really have a, a, a small version. And, and the truth is, is we use a lot of hop extract in it for bittering, that it's tough for home brewers to get hop extract. We use a lot of sugar. Um, there's no Cascade hops in, in the Younger. Uh, all the hops are very fruit-driven uh, flavored hops, so Centennial, Simcoe, and Amarillo. And all those things really help cover up some of the alcohol uh, that's in the younger, you know, a 10.8% alcohol. The younger is a pretty, uh, uh, pretty deceiving beer. So how we do this here? Well, uh, of course, we didn't get to bring home any Pliny the Younger because it's only served on draft, and they're a bit strict about not letting people take any home. We did, however, get a really sweet growler full of Pliny the Elder, fresh out of the tap. Um, but that didn't actually make it through the night. <laughs> yeah, I think I set a personal record for hop consumption in a five hour period. I think my blood IBU was up to about 80 by the end of the day and I had like hop resin coming out of my fingernails. Yeah, you were getting a little bitter by the end of the day. <laughs> uh, but we did get some pretty sweet swag, some nice pint of the younger shirts and a few glasses. That was pretty cool. Yeah, and that was actually the most expensive part of the day. I mean, for the three of us, uh, for five hours, we had 20 Pliny's and a bunch of food and it was under 150 bucks, so not a bad deal. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure though that we paid in other ways later <laughs> on. Yeah, the younger truly is a wolf among shrubs. Yeah. Okay, so Russian River is rather adamant about the fact that they only sell Pliny the Younger on tap. But we still want to have our expert tasting, so this week we're going to play a little trick. We've told our expert taster that we smuggled him out a bottle of Pliny the Younger. But in fact, we're going to give him some Mickeys that we've cleverly put in a nice brown bottle. Surprisingly not that hoppy. <laughs> No, not very much. What does it taste like to you? Does it taste like it did before? Kind of hard to say. The day's a bit fuzzy. It almost tastes like a lager. No? Yeah, a little it's, bit. Yeah. It's kind of got that... Malty, yeah. sharp... Mm -hmm. So you don't remember. <laughs> I can see how you could drink a crap load of these, though. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very drinkable. Um, I'm not at all what I was expecting, though, uh, from descriptions I've heard of this beer. Really? Is it hoppy? Not as much as I expected it to be. Really? Uh, I mean, there's hops there. There's there's obviously bitterness to, to even out the sweetness, but yeah. it's, it's not the aggressive, crazy hop, you know, that I was expecting from a, a triple IPA. Uh, <laughs> this, this, to me, drinks like a session beer, you know, like an under 4% you know, oh, wow. beer. Now, what would you say if I told you you weren't drinking Pliny the Younger, you're drinking Mickey's with a little bit of Imperial Stout stained in it? 
<laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> so, another successful beer adventure. What do you think of the event? So the parts I remember were fantastic. Uh, the thing is, uh, somewhere in the afternoon, the day just went sideways on me. I'm pretty sure you should have told me to stop drinking about an hour earlier. Yeah, I was in no shape to be telling anybody anything at that time of day. Um, this beer, you know, a lot of the Russian stouts that we've tasted before are bigger, heavier beers that really fill you up, but this one was so drinkable and so good and so smooth. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it is fantastic beer. And they serve them in these cute little glasses and they look so innocent and they're just there in front of you and the beer just magically disappears out of the glass. And, Suddenly, you're in, you're in bad shape. I mean, I'm pretty sure the devil himself may be filling those little glasses. Yeah, at 10.8% alcohol, this beer is actually stronger than some of the stouts that we've reviewed on the show before. Yeah, I think maybe we need to find a session beer release party we can go do. Miller 64? No. No. Anyway, till next time, keep on drinking. All the hardcore beer lovers come on opening day. It may be easier to get in on other days, but the atmosphere was just great that day. The brewery can hold 150 people at a time. Get in line early enough to be in the first group, or you could have to wait an extra three to four hours to get in. Food is cheap and awesome. We say it every time, but eating during this event is critical to staying upright. This beer packs a serious punch. It's very easy to drink, but at around 11% ABV, it will sneak up on you. I can't think of any way you will leave this event in any condition to drive. Once inside, shoot for three to four rounds of beer over two hours, then exit. Others can use your seat and that's really about as long as you should drink this beer. Scientific name for hops, <laughs> Lupus selectarius, <laughs> and died <laughs> wolf among the scrubs. <laughs> but he died in 1979 <laughs> at the Battle of Mount Vesuvius. Oh, black <laughs>